Hi, I'm Julie Dart. Today we're going to talk about objective pasture measurement using the median quadrant technique. From this, we can calculate how much feed on offer is available for grazing. Using pasture cuts is an excellent way to objectively measure pasture. This allows us to use hard figures to determine what's really in the paddock. Doing a pasture cut allows us to calibrate other ready reckoning methods for pasture assessment, such as pasture rulers, rising plate meters, or even getting your eye in at the start of grazing. Using objective measurement is even more important in drought or bad years, because most of us are optimists and we'd like to think there's more in the paddock than what's really there. There is a few things you'll need to do this. First of all, you need to get a median quadrant. There are instructions on how to make this in the fact sheet. You'll need some shears for cutting pasture, some large plastic bags for collecting samples, maybe 10, a set of scales that can weigh down to one gram, a microwave or a drying oven, a calculator, the data sheet at the back of the fact sheet, and a pen, and four objects to use as markers when you're out in the paddock. So we want to find an area that's away from fences, cattle troughs, and camping areas. We want to find something that's roughly representative of the paddock. Once you've found your spot, put the quadrant down on the grass. Lift up any foliage that has been squashed. So now we have to pick our Goldilocks square. That is not too much, not too little, but just right. Firstly, we'll pick the worst square, which is this one. Then we pick our next best square, which is this one. Then our worst, then our best. We get left with this square, which is our Goldilocks square, which we will cut. So we're using some electric shears here. So safety first, gloves and safety glasses. When we're cutting, we wanna make sure that the hand that's not on the tool is well out of the way. Then we need to put that cut grass in our sample bag. The sample's in the bag as you go because we're trying to cut this right down the ground level. Now that we've done our cut, it's time to weigh the sample. It helps to do this after each cut because if the samples are relatively the same weight, we only need to do four cuts. If they're very different, we need to cut up to 10 times. So now it's time to weigh our samples. Weigh the bag. Record the weight on the data sheet. So now that we've weighed the first sample, we need to repeat the process. Find a new site, cut the square down to the ground, weigh the sample, record the result. Depending on the weights of the samples, we'll need to do this four to 10 times. So now that we've taken all our samples and we've recorded the weights of each one, it's time to mix them together and take a subsample. So you can do this inside, but today we'll do it in the paddock. Empty all the bags into a big pile, making sure to empty the bags fully. Now we mix everything up. Now we need to divide the sample into four parts. So now we need to discard about half of this. So pick two diagonal samples and put them back. Mix the remaining samples back together again. So ideally, we'd like a sample of 150 grams to weigh. The best way to do this is to weigh it as you go. So take your scales, tear off the weight of your plastic bowl and collect 150 grams. So now that we've got 150 grams roughly of grass, record the weight. We're then gonna dry this sample to determine the percentage of dry matter of the grass. So now we've got approximately 150 grams and we've recorded the weight. We're now going to dry the sample to determine percentage dry matter. So now it's time to dry our samples. We can use a microwave, a food dehydrator, or if you're really lucky, a drying cupboard. We're going to use the microwave method. So what we're trying to do is dry all the water out of the grass by cooking it. Firstly, we cook the sample for five minutes. We make sure that we have a glass of cold water in the microwave with the sample. Once the grass is cooked for five minutes, we weigh it. Replace the water in the glass. Put the sample back in the microwave, cook it for another five minutes. Take it out and weigh it. Once the weights start to slow down in the rate they're reducing, we need to reduce the cooking time of the grass to about a minute. Make sure that you do replace the water every time. This is important for safety. Once we have a sample weight 
that seems to be relatively consistent for a couple of times, record that number as well. That's our last measurement. This is our dry weight of the grass. We use this to work out how much water was in the grass so that we can work out the dry matter percentage. To calculate the dry matter percentage, we use the following formula. We take the weight of the sample when it was dry and times it by 100. We then divide this figure by the weight of the wet sample. Once we have our dry matter percentage, we can calculate the estimated herbage mass of the paddock. This is the average weight of our herbage samples times the dry matter percentage times 67. 67 is specific to the median quadrant technique. From this, we work out our feed on offer. Take 1,500 off your figure and that gives you a true indication of the amount of grass that's in your paddock that's actually grazable. As we know, cattle in particular need to have an amount of grass that they can actually grab with their tongues to eat. If it's too short, they can't eat it. So this is where the 1,500 kilograms of dry matter comes from because that's potentially the area of the grass that the cattle can't eat. Optimum grazing of pastures occurs when herbage mass is no less than 1.5 tonnes per hectare. Ideally, pasture grows best between one and a half tonnes per hectare up to two and a half tonnes per hectare. Pasture mass above two and a half tonnes per hectare generally starts to decrease in quality. More is not always better, but it's important that we don't overgraze pastures when they need to grow. For more information on objective pasture management and pasture management generally, feel free to talk to one of the senior land service officers who work in agriculture in our region.